maybe maybe we're not all aware that we're sent situations and outcomes in our day-to-day -day life that are meant for us to grow from. They're meant for us possibly to struggle a bit along the way, but but within that struggle, we find some of the most beautiful doors that we could have ever opened. And no, it doesn't mean we have to find another person or a or a big bag of money. Maybe this is what you come across. But I'm speaking of more of the experience that you get from some of these changes or outcomes that hit our way. And it's always a big topic of mine about how there are always things for us to learn from, right? If we're not learning from them, what are we, what are we really doing? And I know people are like, no, we just, we're living, man. It's just about flowing. And that's the truth. But these little things along the way, if taken in the right manner and thought about in the correct ways, we can learn so much and we gain new experiences from these lessons. And as you find these lessons along the way that you might feel are, this is tough, this is messed up, why did this come to me? That's a big thing. People reach out to me a lot and... And a lot of times I'll get some people that are upset and mad because they feel like they don't have anything to learn in tough lessons. They're only mad, only upset. They don't want to hear others even speaking happy about a tough lesson because it was so soul crushing to them. There should be no one else out there finding happiness in a tough situation. This is still sitting in our own upset and fear and anger of the situations that we've had to go through. Now, I understand there's going to be outcomes or lessons, or we might not even want to consider them lessons, things that come to our life that are so horrific, so saddening that it does seem near impossible to categorize it as some kind of in any way benefit or lesson to our life, right? Then I understand this completely. I wanted to make that clear because I know there's many people that they've gone through things that there may only be a few on this earth that really have to feel some of these deep, deep lessons or deep pains or struggles that people have to go through. We know the stuff's out there, and we hear people talk about it and and how they want to argue, no, this is all mine. You don't even deserve to talk about it because I went through this. You don't know the struggle. It's not about, like I've said before, grasping for straws. We're not, this is not a contest of measuring. I use this type of concept to let everybody understand there is something that will propel you to another level if you allow it from these tough and rough and scary situations. So I know some of y'all have been going through things lately. I can see it all over the horizon in this world right now, unfortunately. People being pulled apart from each other. People in growth mode that just aren't fitting any longer. People growing in different types of directions. And, and this is with the closest family members. This is with strangers and friends and all types of people in your atmosphere. We're being able to see this. And it's telling me at this time that the world is shifting into a more grand timeline. And many of you are feeling this. I know you are. You're noticing your life all of a sudden feel like, wait a second, Ed, why is everything changing so drastically? Yet I've been here on this earth for this many years. 
I've never felt something so strange or I've never felt so separated or, or so lost and so confused on what direction I need to take next. It's going to be different for everyone, of course, and obviously, but like I said, I can see this on the horizon of this, of this life right now. And if you pay deep attention to it, it isn't ripping people apart and changing their whole lifetimes, their paths for this destruction and, and upset solely. Everyone in their own particular way are being set off in their direction of this life. And it's a beautiful thing when we can step back and take a look at it. It's not the coolest thing when we're the ones in the middle of the tornado and it seems like, what is going on? Why is everything just getting ripped apart and blasted every, every which away? The biggest thing that I ever learned throughout my lifetime that could benefit me in multiple situations, whether they were so wonderful or so scary, so hard and tough was to be able to take my awareness. This is what we pay attention to with using our senses, what we can hear things with, what we can see things with, what we're aware of this lifetime with our awareness or people say consciousness as well to be able to use this awareness as if it was a totally separate camera than who you and your body is, right? Imagine that you're able to use this awareness that you feel like you see with, right? And take a look at yourself and your life and the situation at hand and how it's playing out in front of you. Have you ever been able to do this to, in a way, separate yourself? It may not be easy for everyone, but it's in this way I was always able to inquire into what my life was looking like, inquire into how I was handling everything along the way. This is a wonderful tool to be able to use if you haven't ever practiced this. I think most people would say they have. But at the same time, I, th I think the word narcissist is there for a reason because many are not fully aware and recognizing these things within themselves. I think they're only able to just outwardly focus on others and use their camera to look only out there. I don't think it's because they believe wholeheartedly that they are perfect. I think they just have this disconnect in realizing, wait a second, I can kind of look at myself and it might be worth it to judge some of my steps along the way in the same way I'm judging all these people or maybe not judging, but analyzing these people and their actions. Maybe I should analyze mine. Is this something that you feel like you're even capable of doing? Is it hard for you to analyze yourself? Or maybe it's hard for you to analyze yourself because you might not completely like who you are. And the second that you start to try to do that, it starts to scare you deeply. I know that feeling too. It's okay. I've known that feeling of, I don't know if I like certain things about myself too. That's okay. It's a normal human thing. But the trick to this separating your awareness from, from your normal focus and use of it, pretending that you are the cameraman out there watching here, you do have the capability of taking a look and if you don't like something, starting to prepare to change that or work towards the direction that you do like, 
if we've spent so much time looking out there and analyzing stuff out there, I know that there's people or something out there that you in a that in a way you admire. And it's in this way you could start to replicate those things that you admire within yourself. I know I talk a lot about being original, being true you. But sometimes we're so down in the dumps and so much in a dark place that there can be different routes to take. It might not just be easy to automatically know who you are or love who you are. So it's not the first step to be able to say, I'm going to just love me. Because some people, they just don't. They're not, they're not there yet. They don't love their self just yet. And like I said, it's not that easy. You don't just automatically just click to love in yourself. You got to take those steps. You have to practice it first. And you know, as you start to practice this, what happens after a minute when you practice stuff? It starts to become an action that you're taking. You're practicing, practicing. You practicing as you take in the action. And as you're doing this action, it starts to become something, well, I've done this enough times now. I've been practicing it enough. I'm actually doing something here. And you're practicing something good. You're practicing something that maybe you admire in somebody else out there. As you start to practice it, you're doing it. This may be hard to recognize too. I talked about this in a different video. I spent years on end not recognizing that anything I even did almost seemed like something that I did. I, I was not even giving myself credit and I was, I was doing this life. This is mine. <laughs> There's definitely a possibility to have a disconnect between us even noticing that we're doing things sometimes, whether it's good or bad or whatever. Sometimes we're just oblivious to recognizing what we've actually really been doing. So you might look up one day and notice, wait a second, I've been practicing and practicing and practicing so long now that I'm actually doing this. And this used to be something that I admired in other people. Now, this is me. This is in the way of what you should start if you're unsure on where to go. If you don't know if you like who you like inside of you. I know you see something out there that you like. And I'm not talking so much about, oh, this person looks like this. Their fate, they were born this way. You're born that way. It's not a lot we can do about that. And I'm not just recommending everybody go out and change your whole self to emulate something else. I'm talking about taking these wonderful, powerful traits that these other people outside of us have that we admire. Maybe it is trying to change your look a little bit. Maybe you can start going to a gym and seeing how you could possibly emulate a body type that you like a little bit. In that way, you will start to notice that you're starting to gain confidence about yourself because things are changing a little bit. You feel a little bit better just you getting out there, using your body in the way it should, moving it around a little bit. This will give you confidence in itself. But I want to talk about emulating some of the traits that people have. Those powerful traits that you, you notice in others. If you're looking out there and you're only wishing that you could do that, and you start to be upset because those people are being able to do that. We're looking at it wrong. That's not the way we need to look at it. They're doing their own thing. It's good for them. They're not a part of us. They're their own person. And it's good they're doing what they're doing. But those are the things that we could take a look at. And maybe emulate some of that stuff. Even if you are in a mode of. I'm going to just hate on these people. Well, hate on them in the closet <laughs> if you have to. 
If that's all you got inside, do it in the closet. But take those traits that you feel like you're hating on them for and try to emulate them a little bit yourself. And like I said, practicing, 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 and then it starts to turn into action. Action, action, and you're taking that, act. you start to pull it off, and then it's no longer emulating no more. You're being that. You might start to notice, mm, I don't know, this, once you get into that and start to, and start to notice a change in yourself, maybe you notice, I don't really like this after all. I thought this was cool because I saw it in somebody else, but, and it's in that moment, you will start to learn little things about who you truly are inside. You recognize all of a sudden, wait a second, I thought I did like this, but maybe it was just that I was kind of jealous because I wasn't happy just yet where I was. So I was reaching for straws, trying to find anything I could to look out there at. Everything looked so happy. I thought I wanted to be that, but after all, I don't. I kind of do like something 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 else about myself you know this is the way i would want to handle things i would or where i would start to just take a look around and notice the people in a way you look up to if your mindset is i don't even look up to nobody then we got a little bit more searching to do <laughs> Like I said, if you're going to hate on people and be a little upset and think you're greater than thou, why is it you feel that way then? Why do you think that I don't even have anybody to look up to? There might be something powerful inside of you and you might really, really know you inside, but you're still covering it up. A lot of this world puts these feelings on us that we need to fall in line here and fall in line there. I talk about that too. And then it creates us into this being that it wants us to be. And we forget the whole idea of, wait a second, I'm already who I am. Why are they trying to create me into something? I already have been born and grew into who I am. You might start to recognize, wait a second, they have been training me to be something that I am not. It's in thinking about all these types of things that will allow you to navigate who you are in this life and what you really feel like you want to be in this life. I'm going to say because I have this hope and this know that inside of you, deep down, maybe hidden behind doors of, of parents' words or friends' mean comments you have it hidden in a chest with a lock and key on it you have it hidden what you truly are and whatever it is when you figure out how to unlock it and open it up you know what's inside you know what's inside the the chest it's a treasure chest there there's literally treasure inside of you that glows so bright that many people are so unaware of. And I just want to explain to you that it's not your fault. And you can't sit and blame yourself for days on end thinking that it was only your fault that you can't be you. And so it makes it even harder to want to unwrap all that and really find out who you are. Like I said, there's structures out there blatantly made for you to be so insanely confused on who you are that you do nothing else but consume this, consume that, consume that, consume that, and become somebody else that you completely are not. Now that that's pretty sad and it seems so unfortunate. But without the ability to see through this illusion that we live in, it's so easy to fall into these traps of consumerism. <laughs> it sounds like I'm on some kind of like political rant or some kind of 
societal conspiracy theory. In a way, this world is set up for that, though. And it's sad. That's what you have to do to be able to mindlessly collect money from people. You have to completely blind their eyes of who they are, what they like. Regardless, the world is changing in a wonderful direction right before our very eyes. Many of us, we might, we might look it over, not recognize it. And it's honestly not even necessary to have to notice it. It's going to happen anyway. We're being pulled back to that natural state of knowing and learning about us again and knowing us and being proud that we like this or he likes that, whatever, you know? I wanted to come here today to let everybody know that you're insanely original exactly how you are and something inside of you burns to be released and shown to the world. And it's super easy to hide it because they make us feel hella embarrassed out there about those types of things for sure. To be completely see-through. That's my goal in this life. I told many people this before. Many people in my own day-to-day -day life. I think I've talked about it on here before. I want to be see-through. And this isn't not just for y'all, my family. I feel like for me inside, it allows me to love me and be true to me. And in a way, it makes me feel safe. Most people would think, what do you mean? How do you be, how are you see through? And that's safe in any way. <laughs> because family, have you ever had somebody make fun of you? And you just looked at them and laughed. What can they do after that point? It nearly dumbfounds them to think that, well, wait a second, I just like was trying to really get to this person. And they just basically took me as a joke and took, the, took what I was going to hurt them with as a joke. You took every bit of power from that person right there. All because you decided to be see-through and show them what you just said, it just flowed right through me. You don't hurt me. Why? Because I know me. Because I'm see-through. You see all me. And it's going to bring a lot of people, you being see-through like that, it's going to bring a lot of people wanting to point out all those things because you're see-through. They can see. When I say see-through, what I mean is I want to show off everything that I am. If my body was near invisible, but you could see inside of me and you could see my thoughts and you could see my feelings and you could see my actions and the things that I cared for and wanted to do, that's pretty vulnerable, right? I just, I just call it see-through. And it's in this way we get to live our most empowered life. That's why I'm born. In this lifetime, I was born... To go through rough and tough times, to grow into a being, to show everyone that it's so empowering to be you regardless if you're getting wrecked every day in school or, or all the way up until you're 80 years old. The people that do that are not happy inside yet. I just spoke about it. They're, they're hating. And most likely they're stuck in the closet with their hating. What's in the closet is their fears of what they really, really want to be. They want to be you. They want to be those things. They want to be see-through just like you. They want that vulnerability, and they can't. The structure's got to them too much. The world's set up telling them, nope, you got to fall in line over here because if you don't, you're strange. So because I'm not over there in that closet hanging out with them, I'm strange, but we already know. You see that. It's obviously not fun over there. It's fun where I'm at. It's fun where we can sit out here and be vulnerable in front of everybody. Because vulnerable is doing what we love. 
I know y'all are needing to hear this right now. There's many people out there going through these rough times. And like I said, I'm just seeing it everywhere. My brain like shows me patterns. It's not funny. I can see patterns within things that I shouldn't even be able to notice <laughs> some kind of comparison within. But it allows me to recognize out in our everyday life, wait a second, this doesn't seem normal. It's not this everyday occurrence that tons of people are being separated and sent in their own directions. And, and it seems like we're being led to notice our true us again sent down paths to become our true us again. Family, if you enjoyed this, please like and put a comment down below if this like in any way makes you feel something, if you, if you got something from this. I knew it was at this time I had to bring this to people. I want to say thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. This has been a goal of mine for a very long time. And like everybody always says, it literally wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for my family right here on this screen. Every single one of y'all that they come back to watch these videos. And it makes me so happy to think that I can speak this love into the world and it and it's doing something for y'all. And it really is. And I can feel it and I can see it by your words that you give to me. Like, y'all don't even know what it does for me. It really, really, really means a lot. I just want to say thank y'all so much for that. Not thank you for a thousand subscribers. That's wonderful. And thank you so much for that. But thank you for what your words and just your love that reciprocating it. Thank you for everything that does for me. I hope y'all have such a beautiful day. I'm going to be back very soon and keep bringing this love to every single one of y'all. My name is Macaulay Sage. My mama named me that. That's my name. I'll be back. Peace, family.